What is up heroes, this is Minite Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Pikmin. This is a game that is very near and dear to me, and it came out in 2001 for the Nintendo GameCube. It was one of the first games I actually had for the GameCube. I didn't understand a lot of what was going on with it back in the day, but really it's a real-time strategy game where you utilize different um, Pikmin with different capabilities to accomplish tasks. And there's a deadline, uh, which will be apparent quite early on in the game. But yeah, it's, um, it's fun. It's very cognitively stimulating that you have to formulate plans, you get to explore these new worlds from this really interesting perspective of Pikmin, and you get incredible music and scenery as you get to do it. So my hope is to hopefully share some of the passion that I have for this game with you guys and invite you in enjoying uh, the game as well. So without further ado, let's hop into it. You can see that I had a practice file. Or can you? <laughs> there we go. Um, so here's my practice file over there, but we're gonna start a new ship's log in file one. Here we have good old Captain Olimar flying through space when, oh no, is that an asteroid or a meteor? Looks like we're set on a collision course. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and down goes the dolphin. Such dramatic music, so menacing. You can see all the different parts of the ship flying off, scattering about the planet he's about to fall on. The impact site. So here's the first location. <laughs> oh no! So I want to start by saying I love the music here, so I hope you got a little bit of a taste of it there. Um, but anyways, my name is Captain Olimar. While traveling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out, and I awoke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the skeletal hole of my beloved dolphin is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate this planet's environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I can't repair the dolphin by then, no, better not to think about it. I must find the missing ship parts. So here you can see, um, well, we'll get to the, the HUD and all. Every, everything is on screen and what it means in a bit, but unfortunately the dolphin has definitely seen better days. And we have this area that we're kind of left to explore around. We have this whistle we can blow, and over here, what is this? This red tripod flying propeller thing. Looks like it has a flower on top. And it just planted a seed. A strange thing has appeared before me. I had barely begun my search when it reared up as if it were waiting for me. It then dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we call an onion. I shall call this an onion, too. I love one of the things you're going to appreciate about this game is that Olimar names things in really hilarious manners. So I'll start off by saying while we're waiting for something to go on, these are called pellet posies. Because they are flowers, like posies, and they hold pellets for, I guess, Pikmin food, essentially. But what's a Pikmin, you ask? The seed that the onion dropped took root in the soil and has now produced an adorable little sprout. The sprout emits a strange light, and it sways back and forth without benefit of wind. I cannot help but think it is calling to me. I'm compelled. I must approach it and press A. Nice, fourth wall breaking. So approach it and press A we will. And what are we greeted with? None other than a Pikmin. Extraordinary. When I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Picking it has done no visible damage. It just stands there, staring at me. Its shape is similar to the Pik Pik brand carrots I love so much. I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. Here I am, stranded on a toxic planet, fighting to survive, and yet I'm intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. 
I shall try to grab it and throw it with A, and I will call it to my side with B. Hmm, perhaps it will react to C and X as well. So, obviously this is the tutorial area. The following controls appear to allow me several, or to allow several vo viewpoints. Um, L is rotating the camera, uh, R is zooming in and out, Z is changing the angle, and then some, you know, positive encouragement. I must survive. I need to familiarize myself with these controls and my surroundings. Okay, so do that we will. So the first thing we're going to do is throw a Pikmin. Um, we can toss them with the A button, and we can use that little purple indicator to know where we're going to be tossing them. And so that Pikmin carried the, the food pellet back. Astonishing! The onion has sown more seeds. The small red pellet the Pikmin harvested after cutting down a flower appears to be some type of food that can propagate more Pikmin. The onion seems to be a sort of incubator. Needless to say, I must study the strange life form more. Alright, so while we're waiting on those, we'll have this little Pikmin take some more. Now I will say, if you want to do this first day optimally, you would wait to let these Pikmin, I guess, bud and eventually flower in the ground. But, although I've thought about it quite a bit, I don't think I'm going to go for, you know, as optimal a run as I can. Generally speaking, I've, I've just recently played this game, and I tried really hard, and I finished it in about 20 days or so, in game time, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, I know it can be done a lot faster, and I'm not exactly, you know, super bent on trying to, I guess, get like three parts a day most days, and be super efficient. I'll be efficient when I can, it's just that while commentating and while trying to, I guess, just share, you know, how much fun this game can be, and a lot of little tidbits, and talking as I commentate while recording, I know not everything is going to go my way, just because I won't have the, you know, 100% focus I can when not recording. So, know that this will be an efficient, um, and hopefully relatively skilled, but far from perfect, and very human run of this game, <laughs> for those of you that are veterans, or maybe haven't played it in a while and are just curious. So you'll notice there's a 5 on there, um, so obviously this is going to sow 5 pellets, or 5 seeds, but you also might notice that, um, actually I thought that would have been double. Uh, normally when you bring pellets of the same color back to the ship, you get more of, um, you get double. I don't think there's one up there, but I do think there's a pellet up here. So, we'll grab onto one of our Pikmin, and toss him up there, so he can start carrying that back. We'll leave one guy here to help out. Or not. I thought he was going to be coming back that way, but I guess not. <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll go over here and pluck some Pikmin. So something that's really nice is that when multiple Pikmin are planted like this, you can just kind of mash the A button, and Olimar will just go Pikmin to Pikmin, speeding up the process a bit. Which again, is just nice. So now that we've done that, we can come over here and you'll conveniently notice that on the box there's the number 10 written, which is going to tell us that we need 10 Pikmin to push this box out of our way. So we can use the Pikmin to move obstacles and, uh, you know, solve a whole bunch of different puzzles. The Pikmin are as curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. A glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. If I can make use of their skills, perhaps I can fix my ship. I shall sum up all I've learned of Pikmin conduct. Approach and press A to pick sprouts, press A to grab Pikmin, release to throw, press B to call them, X to dismiss, C to command and control the group, L, R, etc. Okay. Um, yeah, that's just controls review. So, like he was saying, we can kind of control them around with the C-stick, play this nice little whistle, which is actually quite funny. And then, um, I haven't shown the dismissal yet, but we can basically remove them from our command by hitting X. And then we can call them back in with the whistle. So that's the basics of the control. And what do we have here? This looks like our engine. Amazing, there's no mistaking it. My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? Well, it's a good thing you have some uh, handy-dandy Pikmin here to help. However, I can tell you that we don't quite have enough just yet. So, what we're going to have to do is build up our forces a little bit more. So that's exactly what we'll do. We can speed things up. 
by throwing more Pikmin on. You'll notice that the blue number in the numerator is basically how many Pikmin are necessary to carry a particular thing, but the denominator is obviously how many are actually carrying it. I feel like... Oh no, that one Pikmin did join it. Okay. But yeah, so when uh, Pikmin are in the ground, like this, over time they will actually turn into a bud and then a flower, and as they go through that process, they become progressively more potent, I guess, whether that's in speed or um, strength. When many Pikmin seeds sprout at once, I find it rather tedious to pluck them from the ground individually. My wife always told me I was no good at routine tasks. I guess I'll try to get it all done at once by repeatedly tapping A until I pick all the Pikmin from the ground. I've noticed that when I add Pikmin to my group, they become filled with excitement and flush with bright color. At other times, they revert to a paler hue and give off a dim glow. Paying close attention to these differences is bound to help me distinguish between Pikmin. Thanks for the little diagram. I do appreciate the perspective, it's, you know, of a scientist, right, who is researching the area around him to try to, well, survive, right? <laughs> it's a pretty cool perspective, um, and I like that it's all documented in this sort of journal-esque manner of, you know, noting each observation that he has. But yeah, this game is incredibly peaceful, it's really fun, um, has a lot of character to it, and at the very least, I encourage you guys to sit back and relax as you watch me command these Pikmin elsewhere, and maybe think of ways to improve upon the tactics I'm using, maybe yell at me in the comment section if you feel inclined to do so, <laughs> or maybe maybe share some positive words at what I'm doing, or you know maybe some innovative creative techniques, I don't know, whatever it may be. Either way, even if you don't watch past this, please do look up the rest of the soundtrack. There's so many times I literally just, you know, pulled up the music on my phone and would go on like a walk at night or something like that and just enjoy some warm summer weather and listen to some calming Pikmin music. I couldn't recommend it enough. And I should also say that Chugga Conroy's playthrough or let's play of this game was actually one of the first let's plays I really got into. So it also kind of has a whole, or it holds a, you know, a soft spot in my heart. For that reason too, much like Luigi's Mansion. So we've brought the engine back, and the dolphin looks a little less, a little less disheveled. It's certainly far from tip-top shape, but it's not awful, right? Oh glorious, with the help of these Pikmin I've taken a huge step back toward home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of the remaining parts? That search starts tomorrow. So we're treated to this cute little end, end scene. I love this every time. Off we go into outer space. It's really cute every time, you know, Olimar blowing the whistle, trying to call the Pikmin back, the Pikmin loading up onto the onion, and then they're all, you know, leaving out into the atmosphere afterwards. So one day since impact, I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface, or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons. Either way, it seems they will help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I can't recover them all, I may never return home to my family on planet Hokotate. Analysis shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I name it the Forest of Hope. I explore it tomorrow. <laughs> so what's so funny is like, Olimar is such a derpy looking character, but, it, but he has this uh, terminology like shall and I shall explore it tomorrow and I don't know, he uses terms that make him seem well, not quite as derpy as he appears, <laughs> but... Alright, so we have 25 Pikmin in total, and you can see that there are 29 parts remaining in 29 days. So in order to complete this game, you need to be averaging a part a day, uh, which is actually pretty daunting the first time you play this game. It's actually quite scary. I mean, I first played this game, I think, when I was like six or seven years old, and I didn't really understand what was going on. I definitely did not beat it, um, but... 
there's still a decent amount of leeway, even if you're not 100% efficient with what you're doing. Here's the world map, which is in and of itself a beautiful site, has excellent music, and luckily for each site, so here we have the impact site, it shows you how many parts there are for your ship in that area. So there's still one left. We obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but we could not get it in that first go, but we'll be coming back later, um, because again, I plan to 100% complete this game, and the next... The next area to go is the Forest of Hope. You can see a little bit of a preview there. And then you can also see that in terms of the stars, I think there are eight parts there. So we got a lot to accomplish there. But I think we're gonna save the Forest of Hope for the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, this again was more of like an introductory episode. Get excited about the game itself. Introduction to what Pikmin are, who Captain Olimar is, what his predicament is, how to control the Pikmin, how the game's mechanics work. And starting with the next episode in the Forest of Hope, we're really going to get into the meat of commanding large armies of Pikmin, growing our numbers, taking down enemies, trying to retrieve parts, you know, breaking down walls, uh, multiple tasks going on at the same time, and I'm pretty excited, so I, I hope you guys are too. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.